folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, and I'm doing another movie review in the month of October, which is Halloween month, and what do you believe it, the Sanderson sisters, you know, those free, wicked, goofy, and particularly young witches are now back after 29 years, and they're from Salem, Massachusetts, to continue to go on their journey to stay young and fresh forever by stealing all their children's souls. <laughs> and even Billy the Zombie had came back. Yep, all played by Bette Midler, Sarah Jessica Parker, and Kathy the Jimmy reprising their roles with Duck Jones in the eagerly awaited sequel Hocus Pocus 2, which is currently streaming on Disney Plus since September 30th of this year. Can't believe it. Because originally when this movie came out in 1993, during that summer, um, it was not a box office success. No thanks to Free Willy. And, and I guess Jurassic Park for that matter. But that's okay, because Jurassic Park always remains. <laughs> we never thought that this would turn into a franchise after all this time. But have, they have done that in the 90s, or maybe in the 2000s. That would be the case. But hey, a lot of movies have waited that long to finally earn a sequel. Uh, Top Gun being one of them, because they just now have Top Gun Maverick which easily became the best sequel by far this year. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, but what definitely made a cult following for the first movie is multiple viewings on the Disney Channel and Freeform, which was ABC Family at the time. And it was also on ABC, so cable networks and, and uh, network television and then later streaming and all but also home video because home video would save it too on VHS, Laserdisc, then DVD and Blu-ray and finally 4K with the digital code included and yes Disney Plus <laughs> so we finally get to see the movie that eventually became so popular for everyone that everybody, well, mostly girls, want to become the Sanderson sisters. You know, they all want to dress up exactly in the performance of Midler, Parker, and the Jimmy. <laughs> um, they even have musicals, too. I mean, Bette Midler herself uh, performed uh, Winnie, <laughs> so it's really cool. Because she really has it in her, even at her age. And it's like she just wanted to play that role again. And I don't blame her. <laughs> it's one of her best performances that she ever had. That's probably one of the, the most Disney films that she, she'll she never forget. Yeah. I mean, despite the fact that the movie was critically hand at times, well, when it came out originally, um, but I'm glad that it got more positive uh, as the years follow. Um, this one's going to get some mixed reviews eventually. I mean, critics have been, did, some critics definitely gave it some positive. People even say it's even better than it's, than the first movie, but who knows? <laughs> yeah. Now, it had been in development for such a long time, I mean, ever since around 2014, and when I've been hearing about this, I was like, wow, I never thought it was going to happen, but thank goodness, because if anything, man, I wish it had became a hit, and I wish we continue to go on with their next story. I mean, despite the fact that, yes, they, they did got even with 
with the Sanderson sisters. They got they finally, you know, destroy them you know, through their spells, but they never thought that it would be possible for them to be brought back to life. But who knows? I mean maybe there might be another journey going around. Even though it's it does almost recycles the plot of, of the first film. I mean, almost, but at least they're going for a new, different, nostalgic flavor right there. Okay. <laughs> well, anyway, um, when they were in development, though, at first they thought they were going to turn this into a remake. No, that's not going to work. Even, uh, even Midler herself didn't want that to happen because then it's just going to ruin the the secret behind the original idea of the story because this was written by Mick Garris and David Kushner come to mind yeah those familiar talents as you may know um, David Kushner had gave us uh, the American Tale and Child's Play films so he really knows his style and Mick Garris um, been known for writing all these Stephen King uh, miniseries adaptations as well as you know film adaptations of any kind and he's also very talented and he also directed some movies too so that'd be the case right there but Kenny Ortega uh, best known as the dance choreographer of several films including Dirty Dancing uh, I believe this was his this was his first film that he ever directed before he ended up doing those high school musical movies which I'm not interested in but I can't believe they even got a series now on Disney Plus go figure but what's really amazing though is that this isn't the only one that we're getting on Disney Plus we're finally going to get the sequel to Enchanted that's coming out later this year but it's coming out in November <laughs> I'm really excited because now I'm finally gonna see Amy Adams reprising her role as Giselle uh, joining in with Patrick Dempsey uh, James Marsden Idina Mansell and even Rachel Covery but there's gonna be some new stories coming around and I saw the trailer and, and I'm just just wonderful easily amazed and I I hope this is definitely gonna be the best sequel after the first film because I know at the time I mean trailers were really you know pretty offbeat at times and then you know with the editing and, and the punch lines and, and all that I mean 2000s Film trailers are always been a problem. In 2020s, though, I think they tend to get better and better as they follow. But then they wind up becoming a disappointment later on. But I hope that's not going to be the case because I don't want this to turn into yet another internet buzz where you know everything has to be you know SJWs, uh, radical PC culture and stuff. That you know it's always about female this, female that, or, you know, they're always up against men around. I, I, I'm getting tired of that. Th this is too much. Because that's why Disney's been going, you know, the feet to the fire. You know, it, especially with uh, Marvel's uh, MCU. And I'm like, come on, man. <sighs> Enough, of, I mean, all this toxic fandom, all this toxic toxicity going around I, I'm getting tired of it I really am it needs to stop I mean it really needs to stop and I'm just hoping this doesn't suffer the same problem with this sequel too because after all it's been 29 years you know internet was just um, a luxury back then and, and as far as that's, that's where you're concerned internet was around in, since the 80s actually I think it was the 80s that started it because it would have made sense. It just, they're already developing what the internet's going to become, you know, the browser and, and all. 
and we're getting brand new things happening and huh, we're in 2022 and and the internet sure has changed and it's still going strong okay <laughs> but I, I'm but this time they didn't reprise the roles of uh, all my cats you know who's from Erie Indiana and this was I believe his first film after that show uh, Vanessa Shaw as you may remember her from Ladybugs I mean I'm glad she's still doing movies and stuff as well as um, for a butch and yeah they all play uh, Max uh, Allison and Danny which is Max's sister um, and I know they couldn't get uh, Stephanie Ferrarsi uh, as their mom and Charles Rocket already passed away played their father uh, yes they're, they're, and already we don't have uh, Gary Marshall nor his sister uh, Penny Marshall they both passed away too a long time ago uh, but it's nice that they had some archive footage of them from the original movie and it's yet, yet to be shown here and they also didn't bring back uh, Jason Marsden, Larry Bagby, Tobias uh, Janek, and all the other actors. But hey, this is the best they can get for for Midler, Parker, Najini, and Jones. Hey, but. At least they're going for something different this time, and now they got a new cast to join. So it kind of follows uh, 29 years, and they're now becoming more iconic than ever before. So people still remember the Sandersons, and everybody wants to dress up like them. So this is based on nostalgia. So I hey, I mean, even if they're gonna, res they're gonna borrow some of the plot elements from the original at least they can add some flavor to the mix and and it's just gonna be you know quite fun so and that's what exactly what I expected so I'm glad I saw it and you know what hey it was worth it I mean it, I'm just really happy to finally get to see them again you know, even if it's been so long, yeah. But hey, I, I'm just glad that at least they didn't bother to release this on the Disney Channel or ABC Family or anything like they were going to turn it into one. I mean, I wish it was a theatrical film. Believe me, I wish they released it in theaters. It would have been perfect for for the big screen. I know the effects are going to change compared to the original, but hey. At least we're going for something new. And so, here we go. <laughs> so, let's begin with the review. Stars Bed Midler, Sarah Jessica Parker, Kathy McJimney. Uh, join in with Taylor Henderson, Juju Brenner, and Nina Kitchen. Sam Richardson from the TV show Beat, uh, which is a show with... Uh, Julia Louis Louis Dreyfus from Seinfeld, best known for playing Elaine Bennis. Uh, Doug Jones with Austin J. Ryan. Uh, Whitney Peak, uh, who she was from the TV series uh, The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, which was on Netflix, uh, along with the revival of Gossip Girl that's on HBO Max. Uh, and she was also in Home Before Dark, that's Apple TV Plus. Yeah, all streaming uh, platforms of these shows. <laughs> wow. Talk about a streaming actress. <laughs> uh, Belissa Oscopido, Tony Hale, Hannah Winningham, Lilia Buckingham, Afoy Federeras. And they also brought in the, the drag queens from RuPaul's uh, Drag Race, 
uh, named Ginger Minx uh, Cornbread Jete Cumber Hall and <laughs> so on. It's written by Jen D'Angelo, which is based on a story by David Kirchner, Blake Harris, which in turn, of course, is based on the characters of the original film by Mick Garris and David Kirchner. Yeah, this time Mick Garris did not write the screenplay for the new one, but I wish he had, because he originally was going to prepare to write this, if, if this ever happens. And I know they were going to get different directors to to do this, uh, like they were going to get Adam Shankman, but he ended up doing the sequel to uh, Enchanted, <laughs> which come. and I, I know they were going to get other directors. It's directed by Ann Fletcher, for those who don't know, she directed the movie The Proposal with Ryan Reynolds, Sandra Bullock, uh, Craig T. Nelson, uh, Mary Steenburgen, and the late great Betty White. And I just got that on Blu-ray too. Uh, she also directed 27 Dresses and the very first Step Up with Channing Tatum. The movie began set in 1653 in Salem, Massachusetts. We meet a very young Winifred, also known as Winnie Sanderson, who's played by Taylor Henderson, as being banished from town by Reverend Trask, who's played by Tony Hale. After she defies the authority of the church by refusing to marry John Pritchett, a very young man, rather than let her sisters Mary and Sarah, both played by Nina Kitchen and Juju Brenner, to be taken away from her. And both uh, Mary and Sarah just uh, were about to celebrate her 16th birthday. They just made her a, a delicious... Uh, black uh, gelatin and they also gave her a present which was a spider a very pet spider <laughs> so they they won off uh, they just scared um, Reverend Trask uh, along with the rest of, of the church members and, and the rest of the the townspeople and all and Winifred had escaped with them into a nearby forbidden forest where they met the, the acquaintance of a mysterious, very sinister mother witch who was played by Hannah uh, Waddenham, which gave uh, Riddlefield a special birthday gift, which turns out to be the magical spell book, which has the eye uh, that's locked together in place that's filled with so many magical spells. But Mother Witch had warned her that against casting a spell known as the Magica Maxima for all the Sanderson sisters here which makes the user all-powerful and more stronger than ever. But Mother Witch had also teaches the sisters themselves to kill other children to uh, keep their internal youthfulness and they'll stay young forever they'll be immortals and they're going to be able to run Salem <laughs> which I know that's how it led to in the original 1993 cult classic which we almost know the story was that they continue to use that magical spell you know they killed all the children around and Thackeray Banks was about to save his sister before she was, he was transformed into the black cat by Renifred, and then they were all being left hanged until you know they disappeared um, once they get light up by a black flame candle. Yeah, they so Thackeray Banks, as immortal as he could be, from time to time is going to wait until someone will light it up and see how this happens, or maybe protect it from even happening. But hopefully they might find a way to break the spell so that he'll be able to be with his sister again. Yeah. 
And we all know how that happened in the 90s when when Max, along with her, his sister Danny, um, they just moved from Los Angeles to Salem, joined by their mother and father. And it was Halloween, of course. <laughs> you know, Max had to deal with bullies, but also fell in love with a beautiful teenage girl named Allison. And the rest had been history by the time they were celebrating Halloween and you know and then later they went straight to this the abandoned Sanderson College which Max eventually became a virgin lights of the black flame candle and revives the Sanderson sisters and they continue to run the entire town it's Halloween and <laughs> and now they're just going up doing all the best they can to steal their eternal youthfulness by you know killing all the children and also putting a spill on on the entire town and so on and so forth before they end up doing all their hijinks to stop them and hopefully Vinkery Banks who just came back to life immortal as a black cat and then also Billy the zombie <laughs> Yeah, he was, has his mouth sealed and all that, yeah, so you get the idea. <laughs> but now we're in 2022, which is 29 years ago after the Sanderson sisters were resurrected by the Black Flame Candle. Um, we now meet um, a new set of characters, uh, such as the Salem teenagers, Becca and Izzy, and the role played by... Whitney Peak and Melissa Escabeldo. Um, they're about to celebrate both Halloween and Becca's 16th birthday, but turns down the party invitation from their estranged best friend, Cassie Task, who's played by um, Lilia Buckingham. She's, of course, the mayor's daughter, named Jeffrey, also played by Tony Hale. Both Becca and Izzy decided to visit the magic shop, which was formerly the Sanderson Cottage. But they did dedicate it to the Sanderson sisters by telling the story, being run by Gilbert, played by Sam Richardson. So yeah, he told the story about the iconic the Sanderson sisters, you know, about the magical spell and everything that happened, so on and so forth. And then... Gilbert gave Becca a candle for their annual birthday ritual, and which was a, a big, fat one, only to discover that it was indeed a black flame candle. And it was another one to write. And that's how they finally revived the Sanderson sisters themselves. Yeah, Winifred, Mary and Sarah, all played by Bette Midler, Kathleen Jimney, and Sarah Jessica Parker. Yes. And they haven't changed a bit. I mean, they may have looked a, a day older, but still. It's just amazed that now they're finally back. <laughs> Because it actually happened um, as the full moon rises, because now they're both virgins. And now the girls had managed to outwit them by going to a local Walmart. Yeah, bought a placement right there. Although that, that could have been almost a setup to the to that one deleted scene, you know, where the Sanderson sisters were going to um, to this local drugstore or possibly a department store and they spotted some costumes and candies and all that so yeah they went to Walgreens and I know they you're definitely going to expect to see this um, there's going to be some teenagers you know dressed up in fully Halloween costumes as the Sanderson sisters they're going to take a selfie on their cell phones and yes they're going to look <laughs> Like, 
they are indeed very young as it's shown there on, on their iPhone oh wow and of course both Becky and Izzy were, were tricking them into thinking that all these magical potions and all this stuff are inside the shop, but all this had turned out to be a trick. So they had to escape right away. Um, they end up stealing the <laughs> the broom. Well, uh, when they had took the broom, while uh, Mary had took the the two uh, <laughs> those two uh, electric uh, robotic uh, vacuum cleaners. Yeah, you know those those ones um, that they just move around. You don't even have to uh, do it yourself. They'll just do it for you. <laughs> yeah, those those kind of dustbusters. Wow, um, Sarah just has the Swifter. <laughs> oh yeah, and it's blowing all all these uh, bubbles around. I mean, this is this is just crazy. I mean, it's kind of like in the original movie when when uh, they they took all the the brooms, while well, you know, Mary ends up with the the vacuum cleaner. <laughs> See, that that's just that's that's comedy, folks. I mean, it's subjective. It's not meant to take itself too seriously. Okay? So I knew that's what they're trying to do. <laughs> so anyway, they didn't escape to the magic shop, and that's when they told Gilbert that they definitely tricked them into reviving the sisters because. Uh, when he was a boy, you know, he had his Halloween costume and all. He had actually had once uh, spotted the Sanderson sisters uh, that were ready to be, um, to disappear on Halloween night. Um, because already, as we know, uh, Max, uh, Danny, Allison, Factory Binks, even Billy the Zombie trying to defeat the Sanderson sisters. They finally went back and they disappear. Yeah, we know that uh, when the field that had turned into a tombstone, while the other two had Mary and Sarah all disappear. And, and yeah, we all know the whole story here and there. That now Frackery Baines had came back to <laughs> his sister. Okay. So he's been taught to how to make a candle, so that way, you know, there might be a, a magical spell, by because he has the book, of course, to be able to revive them again. So the sisters catch up to the girls, and they spotted a campaign flyer that belongs to Mayor Trask. They actually trap uh, Becky and Izzy uh, all the way down into the basement. Well, they were about to go after him because they were going to steal his blood. and it, So that way they'll be able to create the spell. And they, they end up running in with a bunch of uh, kids wearing their Halloween costumes. And they even run in into a, uh, a costume show where eventually everyone was dressed up as the Sanderson sisters. Pretty clever. That also includes the drag queens. And... Apparently, um, one of them actually won, but but they all but they found out that they are the originals, and they're about to give them the trophy. But then they took the trophy away from them and just knocked them straight into the the judge. And now this is where Winterfield had performed a song uh, with with Mary and Sarah. I I know they performed a song uh, when they revived. Um, which was uh, an Ellen John song called, you know, The Bitch is Back, which is, or The Witches is Back. <laughs> yeah. Um, but they had another song, which was by Blondie. So, of course, it's one way or another. <laughs> and that's where she puts a spell on them. And now all the, the Halloween uh, adults... So now the Halloween costume adults and kids are just dancing around like zombies. And yeah, even one of them was dressed up as Madonna, just like uh, uh, Max and Danny's uh, mother. 
<laughs> so I, I knew they were going to throw in some reference to the original. And surprisingly enough, there's even a clip uh, of the original movie. Because I know they had some archive footage in there. But they did show Gary Marshall and, and Penny Marshall on screen. So it looks like someone is actually watching the original Hocus Pocus. Which, I, I mean, that's kind of strange how they would do that. <laughs> So now uh, Becca and Izzy are about to catch up with Cassie because already they had a party. And yeah, which the boys had invited uh, to join in and, and all that. And then they already told uh, their father that she's grounded. And not to mention um, Task, unfortunately, was trying to get the candy apple. Like, he, was, he wanted to have his most famous and more favorite uh, candy apple ever, but he never had a chance to get any because everyone was taking it. And he only had one more left. And, well, it was the coconut one. But at least he's going to have it no matter what. <laughs> so the Sanderson sisters were chasing them around. They chased down uh, Cassie's uh, friend boyfriend, I believe, who was dressed up as a football player, and then, um, well, he learned that he apologized to them because he thought he was teasing them, because after all, um, Becca was the one who actually uh, just teases him for using this magical uh, spell <laughs> and all that. Anyway, uh, because they claimed that, you know, they were both hanging around at the magic shop and or at their club performing witchcraft and all that stuff. Well, they also bought some salt, uh, which they got from Walgreens and all, so that way they'll be able to be able to put all the salt all the way around them to protect them. It turns out that there's actually a magical force field, hard to believe, to trap them completely inside the garage. And now, um, they're about to capture Cassie because they couldn't capture the father. Um, now both Becca and Izzy are about to save her because they're about to take uh, Cassie's uh, blood. And oh, and as for um, <laughs> Gilbert, uh, he eventually was assigned to go straight into the cemetery to dig up uh, Billy the zombie which is Billy Burgesson, played by Doug Jones. And so, yes, he came back, uh, all fully revived. I mean, he's a good zombie. But apparently, um, Gilbert decided to borrow his head, so that way they could be part of that spell that the Sanderson sisters had offered him to do. Yeah, which is the uh, Magica Maxima. So, we also learn, and this is the big spoiler Tris here was that Becca and Izzy actually have magical powers coming from their hands and well actually it was Becca that had it and they decided to share together to create this magical force field so they'll be able to be protected by the Sanderson sisters and then soon when the magical spell had uh, finally revealed well, they did become young again, but also they finally got all their magical powers. But that led to one particularly secret tryst in the book because it seems like, well, the book has a mind of its own, has its own <laughs> opinion and all, was that it turns out that the price of the spell was too late because now her sisters are going to disappear. So it seemed like the, the magical spell has been reversed. And, well, hopefully they'll find a way to, to like, reveal the spell. And now, and it's, it's a very emotional scene. Um, very sad emotional, but at least now, if they could try to fix this, um, Winterfield will finally 
be able to see the sisters again, but all together instead of being all alone. So now they're finally back to the way they were. All disappeared straight into the black frame candle and all. It's not light up anymore, and now Billy the zombie. Well, since <laughs> Gilbert had finally found the body, which I know he took the head, uh, they, yeah, Billy just put the head back together again, and now he magically disappeared too. And now everything went back to normal on this as it finally hits um, midnight hours of November 1st. So now the girls are joined together side by side and <laughs> and they're just pretty much doing exactly in the same mannerism that the Sanders assistance does. Yeah, you know, they always do this and they always move around like that. Yeah, it's a very wonderful ending too. Ah. <sighs> Wow. <laughs> um, well, it won't top the original Hocus Pocus as we speak. Still, it's a very fun, worthy, and enjoyable sequel. And it was worth the wait. And I'm just really happy because um, they knew they were going to go for something different this time, rather than even if they tried to recycle little bit of pieces from the original but that's okay um, at least they were going for a new different side of the story right here it was great to see Bette Midler on screen again after all these years to join in with Sarah Jessica Parker and and Kathy the Jimmy I mean keep this in mind folks I mean Bette Midler was in her late 40s when she played the role uh, back in the 90s and she was quite young at that age. But now that she's in her late 70s, um, she's, she looks quite as, as beautiful and elegant as ever. I mean, even with the makeup and all. But I gotta say, she really portrayed it exactly as she remembered it. And she, she put in a lot of spirit and energetic as ever before. And that goes the same with Sarah Jessica Parker, because she's now in her 50s, and I know she'll soon be 60 by then. And that goes the same for Kathy and Jimmy. I think she is 60, or maybe or about to be. They, they still look um, as wonderful as they can be. And, I mean, I can even tell that Kathy and Jimmy looks a lot older. But, I mean, with the makeup job and all, I mean... She doesn't look quite as pudgy as as she looked in, in the original, but still. <laughs> but she still got the dish look, you know, when she does that. And of course, <laughs> Sarah still can stretch. I mean, she even did the splits in that one scene. And <laughs> yeah, she can even do a cartwheel and all that stuff. I mean, wow. <laughs> But, of course, uh, they're both, they're as goofy as they can be, <laughs> no matter what. Um, and it does have a lot of uh, dark humor in there, but it kind of softens them up for this generation. Well, you know how it is. Uh, as for the actors themselves, um, I gotta say, well, hey, we're, we're always going for something new these days, but I thought the actors were were quite impressive. Um, very talented too. I mean, Whitney Peak, Lissa Escobedo, and and even Lilia Buckingham. I mean, they're they're all great. And so is uh, uh, Tony Hale, which I know he acted like a jerk at first, but kind of get the idea. Um, and Sam Richardson was also great too, even though yes, he did act like a goofball, but. He can't help it because he wanted to bring them back. Did it in a dumb way, but what else is new? Um, uh, so it does have some nice scenes and it has some great special effects that they use. I mean, you got to understand that it's not going to be the special effects 
that they're going to use like they had in in the, the 90s so it's they are going to use some CGI effects but I guess you know they're trying to um, level its budget because you know this is per, this is indeed a higher budget but not too high so it's on the level of, of things but hey I mean at least they're trying to do whatever they can to make sure that it's not becoming a recycle plot as they seem to be I, I do although at times I feel like the humor does need to be more stronger you know more darker and rather than just being too dry so I'll give you that and everything that was going on I, I know we're in this new generation these days um, but sometimes it could have been a lot worse like maybe they there could have been more texting and shit because I know they're or probably recording a video of them flying around you know with their their broomsticks or basically <laughs> They're swifter and, and those two uh, <laughs> robotic, um, you know, vacuum cleaners. Like, I, I know they, like, the, the two of them just follow them around. They even clean the the salt and, and all this other stuff, too. And, and all, all these other hijinks that they're trying to perform. I mean... I know maybe some of those uh, jokes uh, weren't exactly as you know big as the '93 version, but still, um, at least they they tried. Um, they did have some great songs uh, that they show here. I mean, yes, the witches are back, um, and uh, <laughs> one way or the other, so on and so forth. I mean, there's also a, a remix of, of the classic uh, Raquel Wells song called Somebody's Watching Me. And then there's also, um, there's a B-52 song called Planet Claire. Um, and yes, uh, there are other, there's other songs like Skeleton Sam, Ghosted, and all, and the score was done by um, by uh, John Debney, who I think uh, worked on other uh, movies uh, and TV shows. Uh, the cinematography is done by Elliot Davis, and the editing was done by Julia Wong. So they, so they, they managed to capture the spirit very well, even if they had to show archive footages of the original. I mean, considering that the movie was shot on film. But this one's shot digitally, so it's going to look different than ever. Um, so, I gotta say I wasn't disappointed how it turned out, but at least they took the guts. I mean, maybe it could have been a little bit longer. I think maybe they could have added some more scenes, some more hijinks. I, I think maybe... There could have been more to these scenes that, that would have been quite memorable and quite funny. I wish they brought back the original cast members again. I know some of them may, are no longer with us, but then maybe they could have added some more funny, crazy jokes, you know, that, that's rather similar right here. But otherwise, you know, who knows? I mean, maybe they, sh they could have brought back Mick Garris to write some more dialogue that he threw in. I don't know. You know maybe that's what they forgot. Um, but Ann Fletcher did a fine job directing this. I mean, compared to Kenny Ortega's direction in the original. I mean, I, at least she was... Because even though it was originally going to be directed by Adam Shankman, uh, Shankman, because he's also the executive producer for the film, that it had to take him some time for him to do another movie. I, I think maybe she probably would have leveled it up for the uh, for the spiritual ways of being. 
it's a great way to see this movie on Halloween as opposed to seeing the original film together. But I'm just glad that it finally got made and it was worth the wait. Um, especially for the nostalgia that it's going through. But, and I hope that when this movie comes out on physical media such as Blu-ray, 4K, and even DVD with digital code, I hope Disney will do this because I hope it doesn't get stuck on Disney Plus because I know there are several originals that were coming out uh, on Disney Plus only, but there have been a few films um, that have been released on physical media, so I, I just hope they'll continue to do so. Well, anyway, <laughs> so that's Hocus Pocus 2, and I give the movie four stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.